Today I want to talk about the difference between Chord Pulse and Jazz Lab. Now these are two very good programs, alternatives to Band in a Box, and uh, they work quite differently. So I wanted to go over, you know, what is the, you know, what was the advantage of each one of them. Now Chord Pulse, I would say generally it's its simplicity is its strength. On the other hand, Jazz Lab is complexity is its strength. So let's take a look at what that really means. In order to compare these two softwares, what I've done is I came up with a chord progression and I want to show the steps and the results of inputting those chord progressions into each of the two softwares. This first one is in Chord Pulse. So now let's take a look at the same thing with uh, using a little bit different style in Jazz Lab. One of the major differences in Jazz Lab is that you have the possibility to create arrangements. Now down here, each one of these columns is represents a variation of each uh, of, of one pass through this section. Now, since I know both of these softwares, I'm going to go through and try and be as efficient as possible and put this chord progression in. Now, the chord progression, let me just explain what it is. It's basically a concept of, of going through uh, the diatonic chords of the F scale, starting on the F and going F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and then uh, the final chord is actually, I'm making an E flat. With, uh, uh, with, uh, and all of these chords have F in the bass. So that's, that's basically what it is. Now with Chord Pulse, I did do a little bit of splitting things up and changing some of the, uh, the things that I can do, and I can show you that in a minute. But I'm gonna start, start from scratch with this. I'm gonna go Control N. I'm gonna start here, and the first chord is gonna be, gonna be an F. So here we go, go. All right, so I'm gonna double click on that. Click the F. Next chord is a G with a slash, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, all right, so G, and then uh, to put the uh, note in the bass, F in the bass. Next one, I'm sorry, this is uh, gonna be G minor, right? G, A. Okay, it's late. It's late in the evening, folks. And uh, I'm gonna put F in the bass, uh, B flat. So I want B flat there with F, B, uh, okay, F. And then, I'm sorry, what am I doing? Okay, I got those backwards. Anyway, so B flat and then F in the bass. And uh, so, B, C with an F in the bass. Then we're back to the minor chords again. D minor with F in the bass. And then here's where I put an E flat with an F in the bass. And the last one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, Control C for copy. I'm just gonna move the mouse over there and Control V, that came out like that. But anyway, so so that's it. That's there we go. So that that's that. I can play that now. Now this is a little bit different uh, style. The styles, by the way, I can set in real time in this one. which is one of the nice things about this. It's, it's very easy to do, to change the style as you go along. And actually what I wanted to do, oh, actually I did. I already locked this. 
Uh, this has a lock function, which is which is very nice. Um, I can set the I can set the beats per minute and keep it on that. So even though I'm changing the style, it still it still keeps that. It still keeps the beats per minute. Okay, so, so you get the idea with that. I've done another video on Chord Pulse, which I can link, and you'll be able to, uh, if, if you're interested in, in getting to know Chord Pulse, uh, I go through all the steps of, uh, that you have uh, ways to, to modify each one of these bars. I'm not gonna do that in, in this, because this is really a comparison of the gen general features of these two softwares. So now, what I'm gonna do is, We'll take a look at the other software, which is Jazz Lab. I'm going to go Control N for new. So we're starting on a on a clean slate here, and uh, it's got set by by default this 16 beat ballad. And uh, let's see up here, it's got 66 beats per minute. So I'm going to change that to 120. And Let's see how this goes. Now this is a little bit different the way the way you input things. Uh, I can double click on this and type in the chords. So in one sense that can be quicker, uh, but you have to know which of the chords is going to work. Some some chords you may uh, get stuck on knowing how to enter them, but which I, which I've found. So I'm just going to you can either double click. Now I can click here, double click on that one. It actually gives me some other options here, or I just click on this, uh, the whole bar, and it gives a little short uh, window here that I can enter. So I'm going to enter F. Now I don't need to worry about upper or lower case; it'll it will change that. So F, and then G slash F. Actually, G minus slash F. Right, G M slash F, enter, and it it goes along by itself. So F uh, G A minor slash F, enter uh, B. So I go B B slash F, and the next one C slash F, and. Is that right? Okay, then we're back to the minors again. C, D, minor, slash, F. And what have we got now? D, and then E, flat. So just go E, B, slash, F. And I don't need to enter the last one. It's going to continue that same chord. So that's how long it takes to input that. Now let's have a listen to this one. Here we go. Okay, so, so you get the idea with that one. So what I'm going to do now is, what you can do here is this, there's a letter A here. Now this is the section. And uh, I can I can create different sections in this. You know, let's let's say I wanted to I wanted to add more more chords to this, or I could make this screen bigger and uh, fill up the whole page if I wanted to. But uh, let me just do this for now. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this A down here, and then I can shrink this. I can make this uh, f by pushing the Control and the mouse wheel. So. So we can see. So each one of these is a variation, and I'm gonna gonna do this four times. I'm gonna drop this in, drop it in one more time, and I, if I wanted to, I could switch these around. You know, I can move those around. And what you have here is it says it says a variation here. So I can either do that on here by using the the scrolling in. I mean, scrolling with the the mouse. And it says main A1, and I could just scroll with the mouse so that it shows main B1. And uh, let me just show it the other way, because in the window over here, 
you have a you have a selection with all all the uh, options that you have in available to you so so b c1 and then i could do this one over here and c1 d1 all right so let's listen to that and you'll see what after it finishes one pass through this it's going to do the next variation that black that black dot square dot's going to what happened oh i think i have a i have an option turned on here okay so here here's where it gets a little complex let's see uh one of these this says repeat oh loop playback okay i think i don't need that one on okay so now it's gone to uh the main c1 variation Now it's going to D. Now you can also do other things like increase the intensity. And there are some other some other features of this which I didn't really want to get too much into because honestly uh, I have a lot to learn when it comes to this uh, jazz lab. Let me show you a few things that you can do in Chord Pulse because Chord Pulse has some interesting things that this cannot do. For example, let me pull up my, my previous one. So what I did here is, um, here, here are the chords, F, F, G minor, A minor. Now, I, I, what you can do here is you can split the bars very easily. I was playing around with the, uh, with the bass notes so that I could change the, change the bass line a little bit. Now, another nice feature about this is you can change the inversions, which I don't know how to do in Jazz Lab. Let me just go back to the other one for a second. Let me just show you what I wanted to do with this one. So uh, I'm playing from the beginning, all right? Now, notice here on those first few chords, what's happening is I, I'm, tr I'm trying to go ascending, ascending the, the chords in uh, going up. But this this G G minor chord is actually going down, so so what you can do here is where it's going da da. So what I want to do there is I'm going to double click on this one, and I'm going to click on inversions because I want it to go up. So now you can hear the difference, right? I can I can audition this, right? So you can hear that that's going up now. Let's listen to the next one. Try and move that one. Let's make it go. And then. All right, so now let's, let's listen to that. Okay, so, so that's just to, to illustrate. Um, I may not want to keep it like that, but that's just to illustrate what, what you can do. One of the really useful feature on Core Pulse is the ability to, to transpose. Now, if let's say, you know, I have this, I have this chord progression and um, let's just turn this down a little bit. So I, I have this chord progression. So if I want to transpose that, all I need to do is just hit the plus symbol up here and I can go to any key that I, I like. And then, and then the thing is, I can just output that to, uh, to a text file. So that's a great feature which I don't see in, in Jazz Lab. So this is, you know, for a songwriter, I would say this is an excellent software. And, uh, you know, if you're a singer, then you can easily transpose the keys 
And, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just a really nice piece of simple and extremely effective software. So I want to come to a conclusion about these two softwares. They are both excellent. And I suggest that you actually get both because they both have their uses. And what I find with Chord Pulse, as I was saying, is the simplicity of this program is its strength. You know, you can, it's so easy to put chords in and to audition chords and um, you know, he... uh, one thing I did not mention was that there, you know, there's some other features in here which I go through in in another video, and uh, I'll put links to those down below. But uh, if you push the M key, this has another mixer. You know, that's a bit more complex, so you could actually make your own custom mix of these. And then what you can do is where it says music styles custom mix you can actually save that as a custom mix for that particular style and then let's say you go back to the the default you can actually go back and load the style and it will bring up that it will bring up that uh, your your settings for that particular style another couple of things that i want to mention about this program without getting into too much detail let's just bring up a a recent file that uh, that I did, which has got some complexity to it. Now, let's say that I wanted to print out a lead sheet of the chords. Now, this is something that you can do by going to export chords to a text file. And, um, you know, you get some options there, how you want things to appear and uh, select the file. So I've already created this and uh, I don't need to I don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this file and uh, you'll see I'm going to have to shrink this so that you can see on the portion of the screen that I've got uh, allowed for this video. So, but you see what what you get here is um, you have editable chords. So this is this is nice if you want to add add words, right? You can add your add your uh, song words in there and uh, this will this will make a really good lead sheet. And you could take it to another program, Microsoft Word or, or whatever you have, and uh, you know make yourself a, a good lead sheet. You get something a little bit different in Jazz Lab, which I will show you shortly. The other thing is that this program is super robust. I, I don't think I remember this crashing. One of the reasons I believe is that it uses the resources it uses, uh, the you know like the computer memory. Um, I've checked and, and it uses somewhere between 20 and 60 megabytes, depending on uh, what you've got set up, you know, what kind of song you have loaded. Compare that with, with Jazz Lab. Sometimes it's using around about half a gig uh, it, because it's got all these connections to style files and, and the, uh, uh, whatever, whatever they call it, the, uh, the engine that it uses. Um, so it's, it's a much more complex program. So if you do have um, a computer that's a little bit limited with, with those kind of resources, then you may run into some issues. The other thing with this program is that it is only Windows. So if, you, if you're on a Mac or you're, you're using a Linux, then you, uh, you can't use this program. Whereas Jazz Lab is available on, on all of those platforms. Basically, this is just such a good program to help you to compose and to um, experiment with different ideas. If you want to do more arranging with a program like this, then Jazz Lab is a much better program. There are some interesting things in here which uh, I'm going to, I'm probably going to do a tutorial on this once I get some more experience with it because in the tools it has this extended style creator wizard. And what this lets you do is it lets you select one of the uh, pre-existing styles and now these are styles that, that just just came with the software that are pre-loaded you can find actually thousands of styles on the web and uh, you know it just it just has so many possibilities so there is a capability to actually audition these different styles the, the one thing it doesn't have is I don't think there's a way to check to to select the tempo like you can in chord pulse like if you want it to be if you want the tempo to be 100 beats per minute, you can set that and, and then you, all of the styles will play at that, at that 
beats per minute. One other advantage of this is that you can actually import music XML files uh, or files from improviser or band in the box files. Band in the box files I did try. I did have some left over from uh, a previous installation that I had and, and that does work. And um, you know, so this is great. If you music XML uh, can be output from from if you have a, a score program, Finale, Sibelius, Dorico, um, Guitar Pro, those kind of programs. And um, you know, so that that's a big plus. I'm going to be getting into this a little bit more, and uh, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit the like if you like it. Uh, encourage me to keep going, and I'll, I'll try to put some more information as I get into this program a little bit. Uh, I'll be putting more information on this, and um, uh, Chord Pulse also. One feature I almost forgot to show was uh, exporting a song sheet. Now you can print, you go down to File, Print Song, and what it gives you is something like this. And uh, you can, you know, you can uh, choose just to have the basic chords without um, doing all the repeats and everything. Uh, that's there. Uh, but you can also specify how many chords per uh, per column. It says uh, it looks like more like a row, but uh, uh, one, so that's five, six chords. I guess you can put eight chords per per row. This is the output that you get. Uh, it's, I would say that this is great if you're an instrumentalist and you want some nice big chords on the sheet and you don't want all, all the rest of the stuff. But if you're making a lead sheet for, for a band and you want to put the words and all, all that kind of stuff, I would say the simplified ver um, output that you get from Chord Pulse is better for that. So get yourself a copy of each one of these programs, put them to use and have fun and as always, stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you soon.